If asked in interview, do you know what is the difference between task and functions in Verilog? With your programming language background, do you know how to pass the time variable as argument? Do you know what are the library functions and tasks that are ready to use in Verilog? Watch till the end of this video to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. Introduction. Next, we will talk about function, its syntax, rules and restrictions. And then we will go through the defining process and calling of a function. Next, we will move on to task and we will go through the process of declaration of a task and its syntax. Next, we will be doing the defining and calling of a task. Also, we will learn what is a global task. Next, we will look into the different examples by which we can do a task declaration. After that, we are completed and we will move on to the comparison of task versus function and we will talk about similarities and differences. Finally, we will list up the library functions and tasks that are ready to use with the Verilog language. So, that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction. The dollar sign introduces a language construct that enables development of user defined task and functions. So whenever you encounter any task and function in Verilog, you will have the name preceded by a dollar sign. The name following the dollar is interpreted as a system task or system function. You are reading a Verilog code which is not written by you. There if you find any phrase which start with dollar then it is either a system task or a system function. How you will know which one is the system task and which one is the system function. For that we have two slides at the end of this video. There you will get familiar with the system task and functions already available in Verilog. System task and function are used for simulator functionality and not for Verilog design. So this is a very important point. So whatever system task and functions are, these are not for Verilog design. These are for the simulator functionality or any kind of simulator capability enhancement. The dollar sign is a system function identifier or system task identifier and shall not followed by the Space. So that means whatever we are writing after this dollar, there should not be a blank space here. So it should be continuous. So the name will start immediately at the next character position after dollar. So this is the few things that you need to know in the beginning. We are done with this particular introductory slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Function syntax. A function definition begin with the keyword function. So the keyword is function itself that you need to write. Then it follows by an optional keyword automatic. It is an optional. So it could be there. It may not be there. Followed by an optional function range or type of the return values. So generally any function in any language has return values. So those return values will be coming after the automatic. Followed by the name of the function. So after all these things are done, finally we have the name written afterwards of that particular function which we are writing as for our own purpose and this is not a system function whatever we are talking about here even if you find in the library they might have all these formats but whatever we are saying here it is for your consumption that means you have to write a function and how you start and what in what sequence you, you have to write the function syntax followed either by a semicolon or by a function port list. That means after we are done with the name, immediately after comes a semicolon or by a function port list. So that means ports. We generally in Verilog, we define a block, right? So that will have input ports and output ports. So all these port data will come as the port list. Function will end with the end function keyword. We started with the begin and here we have to end the function with the end function keyword. So this is the syntactical requirements that you have to fulfill. Here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Function, rules and restrictions. So here in this slide, we will talk about the restrictions or rules that you must follow while you are writing a function that is a user defined function in Verilog for your design purpose. 
A function cannot contain any time control statements like hash, at the rate, weight, pausage, negage. You have come across all these things already in all multiple previous episodes with example, definition, etc. All these time control things should not exist inside a function. A function is a pure function. It's like any programming language function and it do not have any time component. A function cannot start or enable a task because it may consume simulation time but can call other functions. Inside a function, you can call another function. You have a function and you are calling a function, but you cannot call a task. Task is not allowed to call from a function. The fundamental difference between a task and function is the involvement of time. And hence, to keep this fundamental thing intact, you cannot call a task from inside a function. A function should have at least one input. This is very important. A function cannot have non-blocking assignments or force release or assign deassign. All these are syntactical things. Non-blocking assignment you are already aware. Force and release we have not talked about. And assign and deassign we have talked in some of the episodes. So you must remember that non-blocking assignment, force release or assign deassign. These cannot exist inside a function. A function cannot have any event triggers. Event also related with the time so it cannot have any event triggers inside the function definition a function cannot have output or in out you know already the types of the ports are input output or in out these cannot exist so these two cannot exist output or in out cannot exist inside a function so here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide defining and calling of a function first type of definition of a function Function 7 down to 0 sum, input 7 down to 0 a b, begin, sum is equal to a plus b, next we have end and we have the end function. So these are the syntactical ones. If you look carefully in the structure, we have the port declaration here or input variable declaration since we cannot have the ports. If we look carefully into the code, you can see here is the input declaration and here is the body of the function. So the body is enclosed with begin and end and inside that we have the mathematical function here. So this is the first type of defining a function. Second type of defining a function. We have function then 7 down to 0 sum then we have input 7 down to 0 a and b. So here you can see the difference here here we have this here in addition we have this so which we have written here can be written also here. Next we have our body begin then sum equal to a plus b and then we have the end and we have the end function. So the body remains same for the two here this and here this both are equal. However the only difference is here here. It is written here. In these two ways, you can write a function structure. Next, calling of a function. How we call a function? So we have defined range 7 down to 0 result. Then we have range 7 down to 0 a b. And we have our initial block. We have initialized a equal to 4, b equal to 5. And we are assigning the result, that means this one, with sum of a plus b after 10 time units. So here you can see we do have time involvement, but it is not inside the function so it is outside the function so here it is called and the value is returned here in the result and here we end our initial and here you can see this is a test when and hence we are declaring the variables as range for all these things here we have not defined range or type because uh, it is not needed however we need to hold the results here so we are writing range here so here we are done with the here we are done with the defining and calling of a function let's move on to the next slide task a task can contain time controlling statements this is the beauty of task that it can have time involvement inside its code a task can enable other tasks and functions. So earlier, functions were not allowed to call any task, remember. But the task has a capability to call both task and function. A task can have zero or more arguments of any type. A task shall not return a value. So if you look into the name, right, it is task. That means it has to do something and that's all. That's the purpose. So why should it return a value when a function is already returning a value? That's why by the definition, the task do not return a value. It just execute a task and finishes its operation. A task can support multiple goals and can calculate multiple result values because this is the task. It has to finish the task. And if we break down the bigger task into smaller steps, so all the steps have to be executed. And hence, it can calculate multiple result values because these are the baby step of a large step. 
a task shall be enabled from a statement that defines the argument values to be passed to the task and variables that receive the results a task shall be enabled from a statement that defines argument values to be passed to the task and variables that receive the results control shall be passed back to enable process after the task has completed thus if a task has timing control inside it then time enabling a task can be different from a time at which the control is returned so that means by all these points right all these points we have discussed this is a task right and we do something here at say time equal to t1 and it takes some definite time to finish and then the control returns back here and this is not t1 so this will be t2 so this is a kind of philosophical explanation that the point at the time when the task begins and when the task return to its own code those two times may not be the same one a task can enable other tasks which in return can enable still other tasks with no limit of number of task enabled so one task calls another task that task again call another task so this way hierarchy can go so this task can again call another task so this way the hierarchy can go and it can have multiple branches like this we are talking about it can have multiple branches like this so one task is calling another task it calling another task so this way hierarchically the tasks are calling each other in the down the hierarchy that is okay and that is possible in the task definition or allowed in the task definition regardless how many tasks have been enabled control shall not return until the enabled task have completed when the task do something right until or unless this is done right the control do not goes back so that means it has to finish the task here defined not the task here by syntax the things the to do list that has to be completed here and then only the control will go back so here we have thoroughly understood what is task so here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide task declaration and syntax there are two alternate task declaration syntax the first type of syntax shall begin with the keyword task followed by the optional keyword automatic followed by the task name and a semicolon and ending with the keyword end task the keyword automatic declares an automatic task task item declarations can specify the following input output or in out arguments you can see the difference here is the difference from the function if you have noticed already in case you have not noticed rewind the video and watch the functions there is one clue that this point is different from the functions all data types that can be declared in a procedural block the second type of syntax shall begin with the keyword task followed by the name for the task and a parenthesis enclose the task port list that means the port list should be there the port list may consist of zero or more comma separated ports there shall be a semicolon after the close parenthesis the task body will follow and then the keyword in task comes into the picture all these things will be clear once we go through the example defining and calling of a task first type of defining a task task we have sum then we have input ab output c you can see both input and output ports are there then we have the begin we have the c equal to a plus b and we have the end keyword and we have the end task so here is the body of the task which the to do list have to be performed and here we have our port list the first type of defining a task now let's move on to the second type of defining a task task sum input 7 down to 0 ab we have output 7 down to 0 c and we have begin then we have c equal to a plus b end keyword that closes the begin and we have end task here if you look and compare into the two codes this one is the common part and which is same so this is the body of the task and the difference lies here this syntax and this syntax both are equally okay so the difference lies here only and the rest of the part of the task is same so in this two way you can write a task calling of a task initial begin we have and we have reg 7 down to 0 xyz and then we have sum xyz so this way we are calling a task and here our initial block ends this calling has to be there in the initial block and this way the 
task is called and then the control goes to whatever you have defined so if you have defined this it will go to the body execute and come back or in case you have in the second way it will go to here and come back this way you can define a task and call the user defined task inside a Verilog code we are done here with the particular slide let's move on to the next slide global tasks global task this is a task outside all of the modules task we have a display task and we use the dollar display which is our system defined and here we put hello world and we here end with the end task now how this becomes global you will come to know by the rest of the code to be shown here we are showing an example here then we have module des then we have initial begin and then we have display called inside this module and we have the end and we have the end module so the module des is calling the display task which goes to here execute the print statement and comes back here this one is a global task because it is defined outside this module and if there are further modules defined then all those modules can call the task this is a global task but in case this was defined inside this one right in this module it cannot be a global task and then this is not allowed to call the task or this is not allowed to call that task so they have to have their own task inside or have a global task like this call it this way you can make a task global and use the code reuse method to repeatedly call a task which is a global task types of task declaration we'll see one example here task my task it is just a name then we have input a b we have in out c we have output d e we just begin the body and the statements that perform the work of the task will be written here by you and here we are few just dummy examples c equal to foo one d equal to foo two and equal to foo three so the assignments initialize the result text and we end our body of the task here and we end the task itself here this is one type of the task that you can write this is one type of example and we are done it's just an example now let's move on to the next slide so to see another type of task declaration now here you have my task again the same we have input in out and output here and we have the begin the body and here goes the statement that perform the work of the task and here to define all the statements that initialize the raise results and here we end our body of the task and here we end our task so you can see that the difference of this type of example is only here we're done here with this example and comparison let's move on to the type task with test bench so here we will use a test bench and this code you can run in the simulator Icarus Verilog or Vivado and also we'll display the result here itself in this slide so let's begin we have module test bench or task and we have reg 1 down to 0 bus we have task write bus input reg 1 down to 0 bits we begin our task with the begin keyword and here we are the statements and we end our body of the task with the end keyword and here you can see only one statement is inside and we end our task so we are done with the defining of the task here let's use it initial begin and then we use the dollar dump file task one.bcd and dollar dump where so these are for your value dumps inside the vcd file i have explained earlier in i think first or second episode or third episode where i have done the thorough simulation through vicaras verilog and vivado there i have shown you that how the vcd file is there and how we can open it to the waveform viewer gtk wave or we use the inbuilt waveform viewer in vivado next we use the write bus is the task here in t clatter next comes our write bus and you can see here the values are changing the bus values whichever we are writing as an argument changing and at uh, this we finish and here we end our body of the task and here we are done with the test module so basically here we use a delay to write down the bits so we insert a five time minute delay and then we insert the bits which we receive through our argument that is the purpose of the write bus function and here what we have done we have added delay manually and after that we have inserted the different bits as argument or as you go ahead and simulate it in any of the simulator reward or request verilog will get a waveform like this so that is a task for you please complete it it's not a very big code you can write it down first by just pausing the video and typing it here we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide 
task versus function similarities and differences task and functions permit grouping of common procedures and then executing these procedures from different places arguments are passed in form of in out or input values and and all calls to the function and task they are variables so these are the similarities of the task and function now let us look into some differences in left hand side we have task right hand side we have the functions so the task permit time control and the function executing in one single simulation time unit so that means it is time independent and uh, this one is time dependent and this one is time independent can have zero or arguments zero or more arguments i think here is a typo and the function require at least one input does not return a value which is a very important and assigns the values to output so it goes and does a to-do list and it comes back to the time control in comparison the function returns a single value no special output declaration is required it can have output arguments that permits hash at the rate the arrow weight task calls there is again typo does not include permit outputs that is all of these things cannot be there so here is the similarities of the task and function and here is the dissimilarities of the task and function so we have done the comparison of task and function from all of the points so here we are done with the particular slide and let's move on to the next slide here we come to our library functions which are also called system functions and we'll just show you the definitions and here we will just show you the names because for detailed description and all you can consult the LRM as because the Verilog is now a subset of the system Verilog you can go ahead and the system Verilog uh, LRM you can have all the definitions but at least you have some list the inside your mind while completing this tutorial you have the function names in your mind which are available as a part of the library and called system functions simulation time functions what are there so here we have real time time and s time conversion functions we have signed unsigned b to real i to r real to bits r to i this is real to integer and this is integer to real and this is bits to real and it is real to bits so these two are paired and these two are paired so these are opposite and these are opposite. so you have signed and unsigned these are also paired these are conversion functions we do have mathematical functions such as t log to ln log exponential square root power floor ceiling etc and also we have trigonometrical ones as sine, cos, tan, all those things. I think sine h, hyperbolic ones and also the inverse of that. We do have all these sort of mathematical and time related functions available in the library. For all the definitions, please consult the language reference manual that is LRM or System Verilog as Verilog is officially the subset of System Verilog now. So here we are done with this particular slide. We will move on to the next slide library or system task display task display display b display h display o probe probe b etc all these display related tasks are available there and we have write write b monitor and all the monitor variants monitor monitor on okay all these things are there we have file IO tasks. So these were display tasks. That means printing like tasks. So file input output. That means you are writing your file to your hard disk. All those things and reading from the hard disk. All those things are there. There you have we have F closed, F display, this is F display B binary, hexadecimal, octal. Okay. This is strobe. This is again binary, hexadecimal, and octal. So all these things are there. Also, we have S write, S write B, S write H, and O. So this is binary, hexadecimal, and octal. And we also have uh, C like functions with the names are similar here. You can have F scanf, F read, F seek, F flash, F eof, SDF annotate. So this one is different. SDF you can annotate here. Next, we move on to the time scale task. We have print time scale and time format. Simulation control task. We have finish or stop. The finish you have seen already. We are have already we have used in multiple examples, and now you are all aware of the task. Those are available in the Verilog library. For the detailed description, I will suggest you to visit the LRM, that is the Language Reference Manual. Download it as a PDF and keep it with you. And you go and into the details of each in the LRM. And as the Verilog is officially the subset of the system Verilog, so you will have to download the system. 
Verilog LRM, the language reference manual. And one more thing I have to tell you that please uh, try to consult the latest LRM because all the latest developments you will find there. Otherwise, if you are using maybe two, three years back or maybe five years old or maybe 10 years old LRM, then you might miss something. Many definitions or bug fixes, they may not be there. So always try to catch the latest LRM and go through it. Here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.